Hey, it's Jen Silverian with Small Business Speaks. And our guest today is Steve Odebashian of Mainline Test Prep, just outside of Philadelphia. We are in the end of April talking about access to testing. No, not COVID testing, but the SAT and ACT. Because you see, if you are a high school junior right now, you would typically be taking these tests in early spring to be ready for college deadlines in the fall. Um, however, tests have been canceled through June 1 with no guarantee as to when they'll happen. Uh, Steve tutors in a number of different academic subjects and entrance exams. Um, but this time of year, he is really focused on the SAT and ACT, which is why the ambiguity about test dates have had such a big impact on his business. Um, this is a complex problem, and we talk about it in the beginning. Uh, and then we move into how Steve has shifted from in-person to Zoom-based video tutoring sessions, plus his plans to offer small group online seminars, as well as consulting about what colleges to target based on your academic record. Finally, Steve has suggestions for all of us parents that are anxious about homeschooling and our kids' readiness when schools reopen. So that's what we have in, score, in store, um, but first, Steve's credentials. So Mainline Test Prep has been operating in Philadelphia since 2012. And Steve has been tutoring kids on college admissions tests and academics for over 25 years. Before starting his business, Steve practiced law for several years, both here and in Japan. He worked on Wall Street as a trader. He holds a JD from Villanova School of Law and a BA in economics from UVA. Not only does he teach the SAT and ACT tests, but he takes them every year too, consistently scoring in the 99th percentile. He's very familiar with current test questions. Uh, he is also an accomplished comedian and piano player, and he appeared on the TV game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? In short, he has lots of amazing analytical and communication skills plus real life test taking experience and a personality that teens respond to. So if you're in the boat of applying to college, either as a high schooler or a parent of one, there's a lot of valuable advice in this episode. Check out the show notes and go to mainline test prep for more details. There, and now here's my interview with Steve get right to it. Let's, let's talk about what's going on right now. And to understand how current events are affecting your business, we first need to get a fix on how the coronavirus has impacted college admissions tests. So for those of us that don't have high school seniors or juniors, can you bring us up to speed on what's going on? Sure. I would say juniors are the most affected, probably. Although seniors are being are affected in other ways involving college, the juniors who have not taken an SAT or an ACT yet, which is not unheard of to not have taken either of those tests prior to March of your junior year, they're the most affected because they now are not sure what to do. The test dates get canceled and then the next test date gets canceled. So as of now, there is no SAT on the books until August, and late August at that. So some students haven't taken it at all. Some have taken it, but weren't necessarily planning on being one and done. So these kids probably took it thinking, all right, well, I've got six or seven more cracks at this to improve my score. So they're kind of in limbo too. The ACT, which by the way, either test is accepted by colleges and universities worldwide. The ACT is still scheduled for mid-June, but a lot of people have very little faith that that's gonna happen. 
They also have a backup date a week later, which is strange to me that they feel like, all right, if we can't go forward with this on June 13, I think that's the date, we'll try June 20. And I don't understand what could happen in a week's time that would make something so unsafe and then all of a sudden safe. But if that doesn't happen, they have a July test too. And the plan is to add a couple of dates. Um, the SAT's added one so far in September. And also to implement at-home testing, which is a whole new world for either test, really. Um, but the juniors are affected also because they're not sure what to do about their applications because some of them, when they apply early for early decision or early admission, early action, there are all sorts of variations of that. The deadlines are in fall. So if they haven't taken an SAT yet, they're not quite sure what they're going to do there. So it seems like colleges are relaxing those deadlines. And then there's a trend now for schools to go SAT, ACT optional, at least for the juniors of this year and maybe mm -hmm. another class. So I don't recommend just saying, well, I'm not going to take the SAT unless you know you're a bad test taker and you've got a stellar record and everything else. Like if you, and this does happen. Some kids are just way better in the classroom than they are in a three-hour pressure cook. If you happen to be near the top of your class, have great activities, and a standardized test could only hurt your chances, then this works out great for you. But there's the flip side of that coin, and that, that's high school version of me, or even the adult version of me. I was always way better at taking the tests than putting up a really high GPA. So some kids probably were really counting on this to, to boost their admissions opportunities, and now they're kind of you know, a little out of luck. Mm -hmm. So many college, many high school juniors would have been working with you in the early part of this year to prepare for a March test. Yes. That test got canceled. Subsequent tests were canceled um, for the SAT all the way through August. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first state that you can take them for the ACT. Still the, the opportunity to maybe take them in June. But how has the delay and also um, the non-answer about will it be test optional? Do the schools that I want to go to, will they accept, you know, not having a test score or the, the talk about maybe these tests will be done remotely? How has that indecision and, and really non-answer impacted your tutoring business? Uh, it's been a huge impact and it's, and it gets worse and worse. I would say like when the March SAT got canceled, it was very March SAT was I think March third, 14, I think was the date. I feel like March that week prior to that is when things really started happening. Like the NBA canceled their season, the NCAA tournament canceled their season. Schools started saying things like we're going to close for a week or two weeks, Right. but they, they were very, inconsistent the college board was pretty inconsistent as were different high schools where the test was gonna be administered they were all very inconsistent in getting that message out so some kids just didn't know that saturday morning if their test was happening or not wow. for i don't know any kid that i tutored who got to take the test that day and i probably had about 15 to 20 kids that i was actively tutoring that were supposed to now I did hear about kids who took it in different parts of the country. So the March SAT took place. It just wasn't many kids that took it. So in a weird way that helped business very briefly because kids that were gonna take the March SAT couldn't. So they were like, well, now I'm gonna have to wait until May and I don't wanna get rusty. So you know, maybe a couple of kids that I was gonna wait on tutoring until they got their scores back still needed my services. but then May got canceled. June, May got canceled first um, with March. I think they both got canceled at the same time. The ACT canceled April. So a lot of kids who were planning to take the ACT in April were like, well, I don't want to, you know, get all my momentum now. I'd rather be hot going into the test. So a lot of parents and kids basically pulled the plug on tutoring for a while. Then when the SAT in June got canceled, that's when it was just like, I'd say about over 50% of my schedule got wiped out. I mean, I was doing okay. Let's say it was like 
20 to 30 percent dip in business for the first few weeks but once that june sat announcement came it was just like armageddon mm -hmm. it was pretty mm -hmm. bad. and the feeling is i don't want to study too far in advance if i'm going to end up taking the sat not until august exactly. or maybe not at all depending. or not at all yeah or like how do i know this august test is even going to happen because the plan was to I would, pe parents and kids were already a little skeptical about putting in time in late March for a test in June when they weren't sure that was going to happen. And then when that got canceled, they're like, well, what, why should I have any faith that the college board is going to have this test in August? Mm -hmm. Even though they're saying, you know, something's going to happen, whether it's the way it used to be where you show up at the school and take the test or the at-home version, something should be in place by August. Mm -hmm. so. I think in the midst of all this, we've heard that they plan to go remote with the advanced placement test. Yeah, and that's going to be in a couple of weeks. So that'll be a pretty good litmus test for is this going to work or not? Because the mm -hmm. college board runs the AP also. Now, do you tutor students in the AP test? I don't, but I have independent contractors that help with some of those subjects. So I, I should get some feedback on how that went. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the feedback will maybe determine the College Board's appetite for administering the other exams online. I think so, yeah. And they're, and they're still calling it like a last resort. They're like, we don't expect that we will have to do this. And they've also claimed, let's say, that they've been working on this for a few years anyway so it's not like oh my god we better get an online exam they say they've been working on it for four to five years now the act I, i'll defend them on this they definitely were planning on doing this in september anyway way before anything happened in a remote test. or any virus you know hit anybody's radar they were planning on doing this but it wasn't an at-home test it was more of like a show up at a sanctioned testing center where there's a proctor, you take the exam online. It's the kind of thing, if anyone's taken the GMAT or the GRE or a FINRA exam for stockbroking, any sort of licensing, Series 7, Series 55, you have to go somewhere and take a test. Mm -hmm. So the ACT already has that planned anyway for September of this year. Mm -hmm. Not at home. The SATs is all about at home with a camera on you that will lock your other applications close out your browsers, detect emotion. So I was on our local Fox station talking about this yesterday and we were sort of wondering, well, how secure can it be? I don't think anyone knows, right? And then there's also the um, conversation about the inequities. Uh, not everybody has access to a high-speed internet connection, quiet place to take the test. I heard in your interview yesterday that um, the AP test used to be a two to three hour affair and now they've abbreviated it to 45 minutes. So I'm even wondering if we are able to do the SAT or ACT remotely, how does it, does it create a bias with people that took a traditional test earlier? I don't know if, I would say it's a bias versus earlier test takers. And the reason is your score is based on how you do versus everybody who did it that day. So that's the whole standard okay. aspect of it. The bias might lie in my Wi-Fi is terrible. You know, I, I live in the middle of nowhere and my Wi-Fi conks out all the time. Or the bias might lie in um, I've got nine... <laughs> younger brothers and sisters this other guy has he's an only child so there's less chance that somebody's going to run in and disrupt mm -hmm. i mean it's just so many different things you can think of yeah. um, or i don't have a computer or wi-fi so the college board has committed several and i think the number actually is 74 75 something like that employees specifically to making sure that the playing field is a little level like if people don't have the technology they'll make sure it's set up for them or the mm -hmm. wi-fi capabilities mm -hmm. um, but then again like wi-fi is just it's unpredictable 
Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, uh, there's a time zone bias, which I think will come into play because what they don't want to do is have students taking it. I mean, already they've had their own series of cheating scandals. What they don't want is somebody to take the SAT in New York City at nine in the morning. And then by the time, you know, their friend is waking up in Hawaii, they've already gotten all sorts of information about uh, what, here's what they're going to ask you on the test. Because this sort of thing has happened definitely with the LSAT, I know, you know, years ago, but this kind of thing happens. So I think what they're going to do is make sure the test is administered live at the same time worldwide. So 9 a.m. here is like, you know, one or two in the morning in Hawaii. So mm -hmm. to ask somebody to take the test then is kind of unfair. So if the choice is between, say, test optional for uh, this year's class versus uh, a remote test. Is there a least bad option? I think it's case by case. So if I've got a, you know, B's and C's and I know I can put up like a, an amazing score, I'm going to do the test option. I'm not, no, excuse me. I'm going to do the remote test because I need that score to really boost my application. Mm -hmm. But it's the kind of thing where it's like, do you want to risk what you've got? It's almost like a game show. It's like, all right, you can, you, here's what you have so far. Do you like what you have or do you want to go for more? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I've got a straight A's and the hardest classes available. There's nothing to gain by me taking this test. Unless maybe I know I'm a great test taker. And then, you know, my, and I think they could, now kids get 5.0s, whatever that is. But <laughs> if I've got a 5.0 and there's some other kid in some other part of the country with a 5.0, but I can put my 5.0 up with, of 1560 and this other student went 5.0 without a test I think I'm more competitive than that student so sure. a lot of like assess your own academic portfolio involved in what am I going to do mm -hmm. so it really depends on everybody's situation mm -hmm. um, when do your students typically start working with you in preparation for test taking uh, the the time that I usually, you know, pandemic free, would encourage students to really get that big push in is the summer between 10th and 11th grades. So okay, so pretty early. Are, and how long do they work with you usually? Some of them when it's very case by case again, but some of them will work with me for several weeks. So they might start in like early July with an eye to taking a test in September or October. Or November. So what we might do is like a, a weekly session through most of the summer um, and then maybe go to like once every couple of weeks once school starts if they're not ready to take anything in early fall. Mm -hmm. uh, some start in 10th grade, some start, some would be starting in winter of this year, meaning January, because again that's not ridiculously late. Nobody knew what was going to happen. So uh, most sure. of my kids had taken something prior to this March SAT, but I definitely had, you know, five or six that hadn't taken anything. And okay. Is that the case? Do you start with a baseline and then um, do you have a goal when you begin working with your students about the percentage or the number of points that they're going to increase their score? Yeah, it depends. And again, case you'll hear me say case by case over and over. <laughs> it really is case by case, depending on a few things. One, um, where are what are your scores like right now? Like if you took a practice test or if I have a recent PSAT I can look at. Or let's say you're coming over from a, a tutoring company that hasn't been meeting your needs. I can at least, or if you've already taken the SAT, that's the best one, like a real live SAT. And then I kind of get a sense of, what score are you looking for? And a lot of that is based on where are you looking to apply to school? Okay. And I'll be very honest with the kid. If they're like, well, I want to go to Harvard. I want to go to Stanford. I want to go to UVA. And I'm like, you, you need like 400 points, which is not impossible, but are you going to be able to put in this much time and make sure you've got several backup plans ready? Budget is definitely a factor to how much tutoring are they going to do? So there are a few different inputs that go into that. But what happens is a lot of students will 
do several sessions with me. So no typical case, but maybe 10 90 minute sessions. So about 15 hours, they'll take a test. They'll get their scores back in a couple of weeks. We'll take a look at it. Um, some tests will actually give you your test booklet back so you can see the questions and answers that you got right and wrong. Um, both tests will do it, but they won't do it every single time. So a few times a year, you'll have one of those tests. That's the best feedback. And then we'll maybe schedule a three or four more sessions prior to another exam to work on your score. Mm -hmm. um, the, as far as students, and I should mention too that um, mainline test prep was um, voted in the top 16 of test prep um, organizations in Philadelphia out of 350 surveyed. Um, so uh, great credentials there. Um, th that's the other thing you mentioned, the um, students are losing the ability to do multiple tasks. So it might just be a one and done for them. Um, and like the other thing is like, not only, not only because there aren't as many tests available, but because their schedules are so specific. So if a kid knows he's got football in the fall and his plan was, well, I'll, I, I will have taken the SAT in March and then June so that I don't have to worry about it in the fall of my senior year. And now it's like, well, maybe you do have to worry about it. Or somebody who's got the musical and they know I've got a musical in the fall, I've got to take it in the summer. So like right, they're getting the jammed up with applications due yeah, in, right. in mid-fall. Right. Um, so how is another one. College of Visits is another thing that's sort of, it's, it's such a huge part of the process now. And now it's like people were planning on doing their visits in the spring. And it's like, now when are they going to do them? Right. They, gonna, or they do virtual visits, which is kind of like. Right. Um, how were you doing, were you doing online tutoring with your students before COVID or? or yeah. Um, I was, but it was usually only when necessary. Okay. So it was the kind of thing where I would get students from Florida. I have a lot of students in Florida. And it usually just starts with one who then lets some people know. And it's a, it's a very word of mouth driven business model. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so just through knowing lots of people through law school and college and high school and all sorts of different channels. I had students who obviously weren't gonna meet with me in person. Florida or Scotland or Vancouver, California, even, you know, Hatboro, which to people in Colorado, you might not know what that is, but Hatboro is like 40 minutes from where I would normally meet with kids. So is it really worth driving 40 minutes during the school year and then driving back? Well, we could do the same thing online. And I definitely let people know that the results have been the same, both online as they are in person. So I did have business online, but it wasn't a big percentage of it. And it wasn't, you know, forced to be online. Mm -hmm. I would say it was probably like 15% of my hours were spent online. Mm -hmm. Those are hundred now. Right. So now all of the tutoring that you're doing is delivered via Skype. What kind of, what's, what does the format look like? It's generally Zoom these days. Um, okay. Skype, but Skype would be unreliable at times. Like when I wanted to share the screen, it was almost like playing roulette. Like, all right, is it going to work this time? No, is like, and nobody needs that when they're paying me for my time. So Zoom has been much more reliable in terms of screen sharing. Zoom will be better once I hopefully ramp up business for like smaller groups. So I think if I ever get, you know, like, because this is the kind of thing I would do on a monthly basis, an all day seminar where I would have anything between like three and 10 kids. So the hope is within a couple of weeks to start doing these once every couple of weeks online and you know, they'll be available to anybody worldwide. There's a fee involved, but for Zoom, I'm more comfortable with a group of like seven or eight kids as I, than I would have been on Skype. Okay, that makes sense to me. Um... How did you, what advice would you give right now to your students, to the parents of your students that don't know when the next test date is going to be? 
Is it to keep up on their studies and plan that they're going to take the test at the next available date? Yeah, basically, I, and this is something I've been saying all along, and some, I'm sure some parents are like, he, he said plan on June, and it didn't happen. But we really don't know. And, and it sounds to me like August, which, I mean, it seems like an eternity away. I mean, this is, the SAT is four months away. I mean, I've got to believe things are going to be very different in a good way. In four mm -hmm. months. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but the plan is there's going to be some sort of testing in place, whether it's in person, on paper and pencil, with paper and pencil, or is it going to be online? The material is the same. So it's not like, oh my God, I spent all that time learning about equations of lines and now there's this exam on Portuguese. I've studied the wrong stuff. It's the same material. It's just maybe getting used to it. So once we know what's going to happen, we'll be ready to tutor kids in, okay, here's what it's going to look like on your screen. So hopefully they will give kids enough lead time to learn it. And something that I was mentioning yesterday on our Fox station is before anybody signs up for this computerized SAT, they have to take a full practice test just to get familiar with everything. So it's not like you're just going to show up one morning and hit start and like, Oh my God, like get used. You definitely have to get acclimated to what it's going to look like. It's, yeah. it's, pretty, it's stressful enough knowing what it's like. But if you're just going into it blind, that's really going to be kind of scary. Steve, I know you like to take the same test that your students do. So will you have the opportunity to take a remote test? That I don't know. That maybe is, that's a good question because for the paper exams, there's going to be this whole pecking order for who is allowed to take it because already sometimes you don't get to the testing site of your choice um, because there's going to be so, there are so many people that want to take this test. Um, whether it's on paper or computerized, they've already indicated kids that were registered for June will get preference. Kids who have not taken, juniors especially, who have not taken a single SAT will be given the highest priority. So, you know, 50-year-old mm -hmm. men who have already graduated from college are not going to be given much priority. You, know, <gasps> you happen to know one. How did you, um, how did you get started in this business? Um, I was a really good test taker, so I would often find myself tutoring GMAT, and, then, and I think we said 15 years, but it even goes back further. That's probably from something I need to update. Like, I was definitely doing this in the 1990s, so we're, we're almost on 25 years now, I think. Um, I, in both the industries that I was in, law and trading, they're often fickle in terms of layoffs. So often I would find myself in between jobs and this was always a pretty good high paying hourly gig to mm -hmm. tutor a GMAT exam or an SAT or even TOEFL test of English as a foreign language. So for a while when I was in Japan, I actually was doing it full time in between jobs and um, just always would do it, you know, a few hours here and there. So it was Never like a full-time job except for a short period in Japan until I launched my own thing. So I was, we were talking earlier about how my wife and I moved to Hoboken right at, and right after we signed the lease, I got laid off from a, a job I was working at. My entire unit got wiped out. And, you know, once the severance ran out, it was like, here's something I can start doing again. So I would teach GMAT classes for prospective MBAs and then started working on the SAT. And then suddenly I realized the SAT is just such a, and then eventually the ACT. They're much more universally needed tests. Not everybody mm -hmm. is going to go to business school. I would tutor the LSAT too. And even fewer are interested in law school, but everybody knows somebody or has someone in their house that is going to apply to college um, or they live next door to someone who's going to apply to college or they have a nephew or a niece. It, it just touches on everybody. So knowing that test really well definitely turned out to be the smarter move. While mm -hmm. I still tutor the other tests, they're just, there's not as much of a demand for that. Mm -hmm. um, what makes a good test taker? Why do you, what are the, the major tools um, you use with your students? Why do, 
why do your customers seek you out in particular as opposed to going to one of the competitors? Sure. Well, a lot of it is definitely knowing the content. I mean, you can't just take a test that's based on algebra and geometry if you've never had it. But there are, you know, students that have taken algebra, taken geometry, who just go into those tests and don't do well. And a lot of it is, some of it's test taking anxiety, which tells me maybe they haven't been practicing the test enough before they go in there. A lot of it is recognizing that the SAT and the ACT are not like tests you would take in school. So often when I'm teaching kids something, they're like, your math teacher wouldn't like for you to do this, but I'm not your math teacher. So here's something that you need to think about when you're doing things like, okay, you might not even understand what the math concept is here, but it's multiple choice. And you can look at a couple of these answers and go, well, I know that's wrong. And I'll give you a good example. Like if I said the population of Pennsylvania is 20 million. Um, what is the population of Philadelphia? If you, see, if you see answers that are higher than 20 million and you don't know what the population of Philadelphia is, don't just guess. Because if you guess 21 million, I'm going to be like, well, that's a terrible guess. Because it can't be more than the state in which it is located. So mm -hmm. there's a lot involved there, like making sure you're a good guesser, recognizing patterns. A lot of the Questions are predictable. Like, no, you know, you'll never know exactly what's going to be on the test, but there are 20 to 30 concepts in math. Grammar and punctuation is a great example of knowing exactly what you're going to be asked. So if, if you haven't learned this rule, that's basically you saying, I don't care, and I'm willing to give up those points. Like, I'll tell kids, like, if you've got to, you've got to know this rule because... I can almost guarantee four to six questions every time will be about this. And if you know the rule, you're going to get it right. And if you don't, you're guessing. So little things like that. Um, knowing how to anticipate what's coming. Knowing the timing of the test is very important. So sometimes kids go, I ran out of time. I go, well, that's because you never, you never would do a practice test. And mm -hmm. your SAT turned out to be your practice test. So no reason to go in there if you're not ready. Mm -hmm. so a lot mm -hmm. of different things to that. And yeah. I also think just the fact that I take the test gives me some credibility and solidarity with the kids. You know? Definitely. So it's different to say like, oh, this was on the SAT I took last weekend as opposed to, oh, in 1986, I remember you know, we had this kind of question. I said, great, it doesn't apply to me. Right. Yeah, imagine if everyone's teachers took the same test and were able to to talk about their testing experience yeah um you have some great um videos on your facebook page of exactly what the tutoring looks like um where you step through it happened to be a, a math problem and you talk about identifying the kind of problem it is and what they're looking for and what answers you can eliminate and it was great because it didn't actually require you to solve for the different variables. It was just getting to the, the answer that it must be. I know exactly which question you're talking about. Yeah, that's very important to like recognize when a question is kind of letting you know you don't need to do all sorts of work because it'll buy you some time. Not, not only that, it's going to be very hard to do it the traditional way. So there's a lot of like recognition involved that I like, you know, there are certain problems I tell kids, this is the kind of question where either you're going to know exactly what they want and you're going to feel great, or you're just going to be spinning your wheels for the next five minutes and probably not getting it right, which is a huge advantage to have. Yeah. Yeah. And losing confidence as you're, you know, frantically trying to yeah. work through a problem or catch up. Um, we've talked a lot, um, at this point about the challenges that your high schoolers are facing with regard to the college entrance exam. But there's a whole nother thing happening um, as a result of school closure, and that's homeschooling. Um, I know you and your wife have three boys, the oldest is, of which is seven. Are you the de facto homeschool teacher in your house? How is that working for you? No, my wife is definitely the one like taking the brunt of that, mainly because I've got to figure out how to get clients through the door. I mean, I'm up there occasionally helping for sure. But uh, I mean, for the most part, the four-year-old 
because we have a one-year-old also. The one-year-old's obviously not involved in the home learning, but the four-year-old doesn't get that much in terms of instruction. So it's like a couple of 30-minute sessions a week. Um, mm -hmm. and he'll get homework, color this dinosaur, that sort of thing. So just to spend time with them, I'll be up there every now and then helping them with that. But yeah. the, the seven-year-old who's in first grade definitely has a much more structured curriculum. Like he'll have three to four Zoom sessions a day. So we're, we're hoping he starts to develop some more independence with that and organizational skills. So, and then he has homework. So a lot of the time it's making sure he realizes you wouldn't be doing this at school. Why do you think you can do that at home? But I mean, it's, it's hard to instill that in them because their whole world was turned upside down too. Right. I mean, it's hard to instill that kind of accountability in college students, let alone yeah. in elementary students, right? Yeah. And, and depending on the age of your kids, for parents, it can be a full-time job just getting the emails from the district, figuring out where they need to take their classes, what's due, all of that. Um, yeah. have, have you and your business gotten um, calls from parents that are concerned about where their kids might be in September? Yeah, and that's been more of a recent phenomenon and it's definitely something I wanna try to take advantage of because a lot of parents are feel they're not getting what they need. Um, in the sense of every you know couple of days they get like a videotaped lesson but it's not very interactive and especially with subjects like math where you're building on what you learned the year before so parents are very concerned about is my kid going to be ready for algebra two if he's not really doing geometry at home or algebra one yeah. um and certainly from the grade school parents like you know my kid is supposed to take algebra next year but the basic arithmetic that he's supposed to be doing now. I don't, and a lot of the times it's like, I don't know what he's learning or what she's learning. And there aren't really Where any can you teach it? Or, Yeah, or accountability. So, you know, they, if they passed, that's not going to let the parent know, like, oh, he's ready for the next level as much as, oh, he got a 98. I'm comfortable putting him in the highest Correct. track here. Correct. So most like, schools. Yeah. There are gaps for sure that parents are worried about. Yeah, most schools um, closed mid to late March. They are not resuming school. Um, they're doing online instruction, but that basically leaves a hole of a couple months. Um, so then they're going to need to to plan for that in September. What um, if September what, even happens? Like who knows about that too? That's mm -hmm. another worry too. Mm -hmm. How um, are you able to supplement so, some of the remote learning? I mean, how are you re answering those parents' calls um, about what they can be doing now to better prepare their kids? Basically, what we'll do is I'll, I'll ask a parent to send me a syllabus of what the, the kid was supposed to be doing or like, you know, scan a couple of homework assignments, scan some pages from the notebook so I can see what it is that they're learning. And the good thing about math, at least, you know, when you're so used to tutoring math, you know, several hours ago, I've got the ability to just make up problems like, you know, right off the top of my head. Um, and it's just the kind of thing where you want to make sure that the child knows what they were supposed to know going into the next unit. So, you know, well, before we move into quadratics and algebra, have you figured out how to just solve a simple linear equation? Because if you haven't, the online curriculum is moving faster than the pace at which you are comfortable. So it's a lot of like shoring up weaknesses and just like, you know, doing practice problems. And then a lot of it is just make my kid better at math. Like tell them some shortcuts you've used before to like, you know, do math in your head. So, because a lot of kids are very calculator dependent. So this is a good chance to maybe just sort of work on those skills. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so do you, is there, we, they, these may become new service offerings for you. Are there other ways that you predict your business might pivot to meet all the changes that are brought about? Yeah, I think, um, and this is something that we do, but it certainly is not a big 
part of our business, although it, I've definitely got experience in it, is the whole college counseling side of things. Um, because if kids aren't taking tests, they still have to apply to these schools and they've got to figure out a way to best present their credentials. So the whole idea, definitely been helping a lot with essay preparation anyway. This is something that I've been doing since my days in Japan in the 1990s, but helping kids write their essays for different colleges. Um, helping kids decide where they want to go is definitely a big business too. So mm -hmm. that, that will certainly be a, a bigger focus of ours. Going mm -hmm. into and a lot of that is, is based on numbers anyway, which, which I love. So you, you tell me what your grades are, tell me what your scores are, if you have scores, what your extracurriculars are like. And then there are so many different programs now, like the kids all have this thing called Naviance at the school, which allows you to put in all your different statistics and the program will generate a list of you know 10 to 15 schools and tell you these are schools maybe you should target these are your safety schools these are your okay kind of a reach school these are your long shots here's how kids from your high school have done in terms of applying to this college in the past five years and it's very it's like i remember doing all this with paper and pencil for my own applications you know 30 years ago so now it's all kind of done for you so you know like oh i've got a 3.7 and a 1420 i want to go to lehigh and i go to conestoga high school what are my chances and it'll let mm -hmm. you know like, what kinds of kids got in in the past five years so you can be like well i'm higher than this kid on the chart but i'm you know lower than this guy so it really sort of like paints a pretty accurate speculative speculative picture for you mm -hmm. sounds like a very important service especially if they're not able to depend on the data points of test scores yeah. if they're looking at other criteria their high school record their extracurricular activities etc um, so you might have to prepare for a very busy summer and fall i'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping June is usually my slowest month. Like we plan for that. But if things start opening up and people are feeling confident that these tests are happening in July and August and even June, June, I, I mean, I think June will be busier than past Junes of mine anyway. Busy enough to make up for a dead April and part of March and May. Probably not, but we'll see. Well, listen, it, it sounds like you made some really smart pivots um, and have been uh, present and accessible for students and parents as they navigate as we navigate through this together. Um, for people that are interested in working with you, how can they find you? How can um, they get in touch with you? Mainlinetestprep.com is, is a great way to find me. It's our website. Um, I definitely should update it in terms of media appearances, because I've definitely been trying to get my face out there, at least in the local Philadelphia area. But yeah, you can definitely find information about us there, what tests we offer, what services we offer. You can email me, steve at mainlinetestprep.com, phone number 484-424-9893. That's 484-424-9893. Um, I'll generally get back to you within the day. And, you know, there's, there is no blueprint right now for what we do. So, you know, any question you've got, you know, whether it's like, hey, do you tutor Latin? Like, I don't, but I might have somebody who's worked for me that does. So anything goes at this point. Well, that's great. I want to thank you for being with us, for, for talking about what's going on in your business and what's on the mind of many of this students and teachers that you work with and fingers crossed that we have some decisions soon and we know what the fall admissions process is going to look like definitely and the other thing to mention is smaller groups have definitely been like forming to do some tutoring especially now that they're you know scattered across you know their district it's like and nobody has to worry about uh oh i've got lacrosse practice so i can't do thursday afternoons it's like the kids all have the same schedule basically now. So forming these little groups has been easier too. Right. So, you know, well, it's a good point. Better. They have more time than they've ever had before to, to prepare I've for been these. Setting, 
the parents of the 10th graders know that like you're never going to have this much free time so get your push in now and try to take a test earlier than you would assuming that the testing centers can accommodate the numbers of people that are going to want to take the test get your get your prep in now because you're going to regret it come 11th grade when you're like i should have prepared for the sat in april and may when i was doing nothing and now i've got a zillion activities and schoolwork mm -hmm. so want to take advantage of the downtime definitely it sounds like it's going to be a scramble once they do make a decision so better to take the time to prepare now. Absolutely. All right, good, Steve. It was great talking with you and um, thanks again for doing this. Awesome, thank you.